This is the refrigerator of the house that I lived in when I rented a room back in 2011 when I first started going to MMI or Marine Mechanics Institute, which is a part of UTI or Universal Technical Institute. And this is pretty disgusting, isn't it? Now I show you this picture just to preface this next picture of my desk and workspace. Because if you notice here, I had a mini fridge with the seat cushion from a broken computer chair as my computer chair. Yeah, I think they call this ball on a budget. We've had a few people ask if I would share my MMI story and experience and then MMI actually reached out to us and asked if I would be interested in answering a few questions in a video for them. So I was like, sure, I can share my story and then answer some questions that people have about the school. And at the same time, we'll be installing this fuel line into our Key West project boat. So it'll be story time, questions and answers, and doing a little bit of work. First thing we need to do though, is we need to go to Home Depot and get some special sauce from Home Depot. So the first question is, I'm worried about not having any prior experience or training. Will I be able to keep up? Actually, I think this is probably where MMI really excels honestly when i was there we had guys in the class that couldn't even get a wing nut to go onto a battery so we're talking about people in an environment where some people have zero experience at all they've never you know held a wrench or or messed with anything mechanical and so i think mmi did a really really good job because each class has like a lab section in it so from like the first week they get you to get some wrench time, get your hands on some bolts and um, some actual mechanical stuff. So you can go from having no experience at all, like none, and then be able to get some hands on time with some wrenches right out the gate. And I think it's a lot better than being like in a work setting because it's a little bit less stressful. You know, you're in a controlled environment with other people with similar experience levels where you're you know some people will have none some people will have some there's some guys in there that have you know quite a bit of experience but um it's it's very stress-free whereas if you're at a job and you've got your boss leaning over your shoulder looking at you asking you when you're going to be done you know it's a little bit more stressful and so i think that they did a really good job of being able to get somebody some hands-on experience right out the gate and get your hands on some tools and some mechanical products. We've got the package. I repeat, we have got the package. Experience is super important though when it comes to becoming a mechanic. Like when it comes to pulling this fuel line into the boat. Without any prior experience, you might have not have thought about using the old hose that we have right here. And then we're going to be attaching the new fuel line using a hose mender or splice barb. Then we're gonna be covering that with electrical tape. And then we're gonna be using this Klein um, wire lubricant in order to lubricate it up and make it easier to pull through the boat. So experience plays a big part in everything. But like I was saying, that's one of the things that they do really well is get someone without any prior experience to get some wrench time in a controlled environment where you don't necessarily have a boss breathing down your neck asking you when you'll be done. So it's a way of getting that experience with a lot less stress. The next question is, are jobs only in warm weather climates or only in the summer? So I'm originally from Illinois and there actually are quite a few boat mechanic jobs up there in Illinois and in northern climates. But the work is clearly going to vary depending on where you're at. But like I was saying, the work is going to range depending on where you're at and like you know, what marinas are there. There's a lot more work in northern climates than people think that there are. Um, it's just that there, it's really congregated and there's a lot more work at certain times of the year than there are at other times of the year. So like some places have a four month boating season, some places have a six month boating season, and there's a lot more work and it's a lot more competitive in say the 
spring time when everybody's trying to get their boat out for spring and then also there's a lot there's a ton of work whenever it is you know the fall and people are putting their boats away because there's certain things that you have to do to a boat before it freezes and so all these boats take them to all these different shops and they all need to have all this stuff done before you know it freezes in case there's water in the lower, lower unit they need to get you know the block drain and stuff like that because if it freezes then you're gonna have a big problem with the engine and so the the work is going to vary a lot and it's going to be spread out a lot although i have heard stories of people that will go on like unemployment during the winter time and then when the season picks back up they will just get hired back on at the marina but um, there are also shops that stay open all year round, even through the winter, because there's, you know, commercial fisher and government boats and other specific boats that have to run even during the winter time. Um, it's just that most of those shops in those areas, the work is going to be a lot more competitive to be able to get that job because someone has probably had that job for a long time in a lot of those shops a lot of the people are very well established not saying that you can't get that job because there's always people retiring people quitting and other things so there's always an opportunity it just depends on where you want to go and what you want to do and who you want to work for where you want to live all that kind of stuff but then there are also like you were saying places like florida california alabama texas where you know we have boating all year round so you know we really don't have an off season and if you did want to move to a place where you know like Florida um, there's not a shortage of work for a boat mechanic that's for sure Perfect. All right, there's our splice. So we got our fuel line into the boat. So that's a good thing. Our next question is how much money does a marine tech make? Well, I can't really put a number on that because there's going to be a lot of variables there based on you, where you live, who you work for, what you do. There's a lot of variables. So instead, um, let me take this splice off of here and then we'll go inside and we'll discuss this. So I'm just going to elaborate a little bit more on what school was like for me and that's going to tie into the other opportunities of what was available to me after school. As I said, I was originally from Illinois and when I decided to go to MMI, I was currently working at a steel factory Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. And I had to be up at like 4.30 in order for me to get there. Now, two weeks before I was supposed to start school, I flew to Orlando on a Saturday and I secured a room for rent that I found on Craigslist for $375, which was probably why it was so sketchy. But then on Sunday, I went around town and I put in eight applications for a job. Then on Monday, I called into work, and I'm not telling you to call in sick to work, but it's just what I did. Um, doesn't justify it, but I called in sick to work on Monday, and I went around and I put in 11 more applications. So I put in a total of 19 applications in total through those two days. I ended up getting a job at Publix. So then on Tuesday, I called into work again, and I flew home on that Tuesday, and then when I went into work on Wednesday, I put in my two weeks notice. Then the next weekend, I moved down to Orlando and was able to start school on Monday. Now, back then, they had it set up really nicely to where you can like pick your schedule. So they had different time slots. I'm not 100% sure if they still have the same time slots. I think that you could do from like 6 till 12, from 12 till 6. And then there was also a night class. So there's like three different time slots that you could go to class. I went in the morning. I was at class from six in the morning until noon. And then after school, from one o'clock till nine o'clock, I worked at Publix. And then I was also picking up any extra shift I could because I was trying to make a come up and I needed the money. I tell you that because that's a pretty grueling schedule and it's not for everybody. But because of that, I've been working on boats for over a decade now, and I've had the opportunity to be on thousands of boats. I've drove $100 floating biscuits to multi-million dollar yachts, and that's what I wanted. So to answer your question on how much money a marine tech can make, it's going to be dependent on you and what you want. 
because you can really make as much money as you really want to. It's all dependent on how much work you want to put in to make that money. I know there was another question and a lot of people making the statement, just wanting to be happy in my day to day work and get paid to do something enjoyable. And these two questions in my story kind of go together because that's what I wanted. That's what I enjoy. I love the water. I like the boats. I like being on different types of boats and learning different types of boats. I enjoy fixing things and figuring things out. And since I went to MMI, I've had the opportunity to be on and work on thousands of different kinds of boats. And that's what I wanted. I've also had the opportunity to own a lot of different boats as well. I'm constantly upgrading through boats. I'll buy a boat, I'll fix it up, and then I'll sell it, which allows me to make a lot of extra money as well, which ties into the amount of money that you can make depending on what you're willing to do and how much work you're willing to put in. Now, the difference in a trade school like MMI and a four-year degree college is that you're going to learn a skill and a skill gives you the opportunity to make a lot of extra money whereas like a degree depending on the degree that you get might limit you and depending on if there's that kind of work available whereas a trade there's always going to be a demand for that there's always going to be a demand for you know electricians plumbers construction workers mechanics um, there's always going to be people that have boats. There's always going to be people that have cars. There's always going to be people that have motorcycles. So if you go to a school like MMI or, you know, UTI where they do like, you know, motorcycles and other stuff like that, you learn a skill that makes you valuable no matter what, because there's always going to be something, somebody that has that product that's going to need to have it fixed, which opens the door for you to make a lot more money. You can work on your friend's boat, your neighbor's boat. Um, your brother-in-law's boat, you know, your neighbor's boat, whoever. Like, you'll meet people being in the industry and working on boats where you can make that extra money. And depending on where you work, like, some marinas might not let you do that. Like, some of them have a thing about moonlighting. But I think there's a lot of marinas that don't really care as long as you're not, like, you know, taking work from the marina and not, you know, biting the hand that feeds you, then they don't really care because... There's a lot of people that aren't going to take their boat to a shop to get it fixed just because they're not going to do that. Like, you know, your neighbor or your friend or whatever, they're probably going to want to just pay you to do it. And that's going to give you the ability to make some extra money. Again, depending on the marina that you work at and the shop you work at, whether they, you know, frown upon that or not, most of them don't care as long as you're not taking their business. But again, that's going to depend on where you work. This ties us back into my story and your work ethic. Because if you want something, you can get it. If you really want it. Most people just fall short of what they really want. They think they want something, but they're not really willing to put in the work to get it. So the amount of money that a marine tech makes is really dependent on the individual and what they're willing to go through and what they're willing to do. Are you willing to live in a house with a crackhead with a five day old moldy chicken on the counter for $375 a month? And I'm not lying about that. They really did do that. They would cook up meat and then leave it on the counter for five days and just walk by it and take little nibbles off of the meat, whatever it was, like a chicken or a turkey. It would sit there for five days with flies all over it. It was disgusting. Now, not to downplay the question or the work either, because I enjoy what I do, but it's still a job. So not every day and every job is going to be enjoyable. You know, I mean, some days you're gonna be out there stuck in a bilge trying to fix a bilge pump that you can't reach it's a hundred degrees out the sun's beating down on you the water's completely calm and you can't go out because you got to work and get this boat done so it's not always going to be like you enjoy every single day but at the same time doing what you enjoy to a point it's going to be you know way better than sitting in an office when you want to be outside and you want to be on a boat but i think a lot of people also just need to learn the skill of being able to enjoy the journey and learn to love the process if you enjoy what you do say 80 percent of the time then that's a win-win because if you don't enjoy the process then you're not going to be happy regardless what you do and it kind of goes into discipline also when it comes to going to school because MMI is going to give you the opportunity to begin to learn a skill and then once you get that skill from what they teach you they're going to help you to get a job 
But once you get to your job, it's going to be up to you to hone that skill and to hone your experience and to put in the effort to become the best mechanic that you can become. And the, you know, the opportunities are going to explode from there, but it's going to be about your self-discipline and what you're willing to do. Because you'll also find at MMI, there's going to be other people that are there that aren't really committed to making a change in their life. I think for me and my story, I was ready to change my life. I was committed to learning and getting the most that I could out of school. I wanted to be there. I wanted to study. I didn't want to miss a class. Like, you know, I showed up and was putting in the effort. Whereas there's a lot of other people that, you know, you might find there will be other students that aren't really there for that. So they haven't really figured anything out. They might be just out of high school. They might not like really want to become a mechanic. So you got to be able to make sure that you don't get distracted with what other people do and kind of, you know, I don't know if you ever heard of Jocko Willink, you just self-discipline and extreme ownership and be committed to learning what you can learn and getting as much out of the school as you can get because there's a lot that you can learn there. I mean, you can come away and have a wealth of knowledge from MMI and be able to be extremely useful to a marina and be a really good hire for some company and be able to make a pretty good starting salary because you have the experience and you have the mindset that is going to be valuable to that shop. I know someone else wanted to know is travel available? Can grads find jobs all over the country? Does MMI help? Um, of course, you know, when I was there, I do remember they had like a specific department dedicated just to after graduation. So you would be getting ready to graduate. You'll know when your graduation date is going to be. And then you could work with that department and they would help set you up with marinas and shops and help you do like your resume, your transcript and like all this other stuff and help you, you know, get a job wherever you're going to go, depending on where you're going. Um, I didn't personally use that service, so I don't really know what that experience was like when I was doing it. Like when I graduated, like I said, I was working at Publix and I wanted to be on the water. I wanted to live in the islands. So when I looked in the Florida Keys, I saw there was marinas down there. I saw there was a Publix there and I was able to put in a transfer and they paid a relocation bonus for me to move down there. And before I went down there, I called the marinas that were down there and said, hey, I go to MMI, I'm getting ready to graduate, and I'm looking for a job. And they both said, you know, whenever you get down here, come and see us. And most of you have heard this story, so I'll give you the short form of it. So basically when I got down there, I was working two days at Publix, or I mean, I was working full-time at Publix, and I had two extra free days, so I went to the marina, and I asked them if they had any work. And, um, you know, I showed up on a Monday, 15 minutes before they opened, put in my application. They said, no, we're not hiring right now. We don't have any work. Come back, see us later. So I waited. I came back later that week, 15 minutes early before they opened. And they said the same thing. You know, we don't have any work for you. Come back later. So then I just harassed them for like three weeks until finally the owner of the business was like, oh my goodness, you know, give this kid a job. This is getting ridiculous. So I don't really know, you know, the process of you know how they help you but i do know that i had a buddy of mine that they helped him get a job down in the virgin islands so i know they have that whole program as far as like if you're asking if they help like pay for travel i don't think that they do that if that's what you're asking but um other than that then yeah they do they do have you know departments and stuff set up to help you find student housing and um, also whenever you graduate you can use their department to help you find a job wherever you're going or whatever, wherever you want to move to, you know, those locations, they help find marinas and stuff like that for wherever you want to go. Next question is that somebody wants to know what does a day in the life look like? Well, it's different every day. You're constantly going to be working on different stuff. You know, obviously depending on where you work, what you, you know, who you work for is going to vary. Like if you work at a, you know, a bass shop, then you're going to see a lot of bass boats. If you work at a Yamaha shop, you're going to see a lot of broken Yamahas. If you work at a Mercury shop, you're going to see a lot of broken Mercury's. If you work at Suzuki, a lot of broken Suzuki's. So depending on the shop that you work at is going to be, you know, what you're going to normally see. And for the most part, it's always going to be changing because 
One day you'll be working on a bilge pump, and then the next day when you come in, you'll be working on a live well. The next day you might be doing a 100-hour service. The next day you might be pulling a T-top out of a boat so you can get to the fuel tank to change out the fuel tank. So depending on where you work, it'll also vary on the boat too. So if you work at like, let's say a Marine Max, you're gonna see a whole lot of different boats, but you're gonna see a lot of Boston Whalers and other brands that that marina services and sells. So, you know, you could get a job as a, a rigger, at like, you know, a Marine Max or something. So you get a new boat and you go on that boat and you rig the boat. So depending on the job that you get will be what you, you know, your day's gonna look like. But by and large, from my experience in most marinas, it changes almost every day because again there's not always going to be nothing but services i mean there are places that only do services but that's you know kind of far and few between because in order to have nothing but services all the time like it's just that's very difficult for a marina to have that business model because if I, if you service a boat then you know whenever that guy has a problem with his lights or his pumps or um, his electronics like when he has a problem with his boat then they're gonna bring it to you so just being able to do services is I think that's rare obviously there's more money in it because services are like that but also that would get very mundane you know I mean once you do a hundred oil changes on an f-150 like you can do it in your sleep so that might play back into the enjoyment factor of you know do you enjoy what you love or in lo do what you love and enjoy then i mean you know obviously it's going to get a little mundane doing certain jobs because yeah once you do 100 services it's there's there's no difference but at the same time i think every other day you're going to be doing something different you're going to be working on live wells you're going to be taking cushions out of a boat you might be doing repowers where you're taking engines off putting new engines on re-rigging all the electronics in the boat so the days will vary a lot and there's it's always something different i think that's why i enjoy working on boats so much because it's never the same there's always something to figure out i think it's a lot different being in the boat industry and going to like say mmi for the marine mechanics institute opposed to like mmi for motorcycles or for a car i think a lot of car shops and stuff like that is a lot of flat rate and like it's the same there's a hundred thousand f-150s out there whereas like there's only so many cvs and contenders and yellow fins and like each boat is kind of like its individual you know identity and there's always something different because someone else has worked on it and done this and done that and it has these electronics or those electronics this got a live wall over here or this has this over here so it's everything's different all the time every boat is different there's nothing like the same like all the time there are some models that are pretty you know cookie cutter but at the same time boats tend to get a lot more customized and built around the owner that uses it different ways so you could take the same boat and this owner only uses it for a sandbar boat so it's decked out for going to the sandbar whereas this guy might be have it decked out same boat but he likes to go fishing so it's completely set up for fishing whereas the next guy might only like to go diving and so now the boat is set up only for diving so the use of the boat even though it's the same boat can vary and so i think it changes what you do every day a lot and that's what makes it so enjoyable at least for me being able to do something different every day and be able to enjoy it every day basically and then our next question is going to be about what type of jobs are available outside from marina slash boatyards um well honestly the marine industry is a multi-billion dollar industry there are thousands of different jobs like we were talking about you know different shops doing different things like doing services and doing repowers so like you know you could become a specialist in something you could be a repower specialist you could be an electronics person you could be a you know go work for a boat builder and you could be a rigger you could be a fiberglass person you could do you know sales work like let's say you wanted to be a salesman you're good at sales 
You could work at a, at a dealership and sell boats. You could do service. Maybe you're really into parts. You can get a you know, parts position where you work with parts all day long. There are diff, you could work for the manufacturer. I mean, you could go work for Yamaha at the factory and, you know, help sort out parts. You could work at Mercury and help build the engines. So you could work for a boat builder and help build the boat. There are almost unlimited opportunities and jobs available for, you know, people that want to get into the marine industry outside of just doing you know, a marina or a boatyard, there's, you know, thousands of different jobs. And, you know, MMI, if you want, MMI might not be the best choice if you only want to be a boat salesman. Um, you know, it's Marine Mechanics Institute. It's built for people that want to be mechanics. So if you want to, you know, be a rigger, be a... Um, an electronics person, be a mechanic, be a Mercury guy, be a Yamaha guy, Honda, Suzuki, Tahatsu, whatever you want to do. You want to be a diesel mechanic. You want to, you know, any of those kinds of things, MMI is really tailored toward you. Whereas if you want to, you know, be in the parts industry and be a parts person, you might not need to go to MMI because what they teach you is all the other stuff you know they teach you the electric systems the trailer systems the engine manufacturers the four stroke two stroke theory um advanced electrical like you learn compartments of the industry as far as mechanics goes you learn you know ignition systems fuel systems um lights systems electronic systems trailer systems like so you know over i'm not sure when i was there it was a 12 month period but over that 12 month period, there was 16 different classes that taught you all those different types of sections of a boat. So that way, when you come out and you go work at a dealership or a marina or a shop or whatever, then you really have a good grasp of here's a boat and here are all the different components and sections of the boat. You know, here's an outboard and you understand four stroke, two stroke, ignition systems, fuel systems, um, fuel delivery systems. And then you kind of get a very good idea of the different brands and the different models of the different brands. And so, you know, that's kind of more what I learned while I was there, which that was my experience with MMI. I thought it was really good, but I also put in a lot of work and I tried to get a lot out of it. I got a lot of experience out of there and a lot of opportunities as well. I do what I love every day now. I enjoy my work. Um, I probably wouldn't have gotten that job at the marina if I hadn't gone to MMI. So it's very, it's a really good option for people, like especially if you're military and you have a GI Bill to use, then going to a trade school like MMI is a, is a phenomenal option because you learn a trade and a skill that is in high demand. Um, and then there's also tons of other opportunities to make even more money because of the skill that you learned. So also if you have a scholarship from high school or something like that, then it's a good opportunity and a good way for you to get your foot into the industry and be able to get a job, you know, right out of school. So that was my experience. You know, you guys let me know. I know there's a ton of people that went to MMI. If you have any more questions, just let us know in the comments below.